we are live. <clears throat> Welcome back, everybody. Oh, yeah. The amount of nostalgia I get from that sound is insane. All right. Hello, Sapphire. Hello, Benjamin. Hello, Luke. Hello, Oceation. How are y'all doing today? Enjoy your lurks. All right. Whoop. Here we go. Okay. Chaos incarnate. Now. Solve this puzzle. Oh, Luke says it's coffee time, so Luke's having a grand old time. Alright, we've solved two puzzles here, so somewhere there's a third puzzle. We got a flock going. Flock of what? Soft the puzzle through here. A group of turkeys is a flock. Oh yeah, you're right. We have a lot of lurky turkeys. Hang on. <coughs> Can I walk out this thing? I love these. I love weird little ponds. Okay. Oh. That looks puzzly. I love Amateria. It's such a vibe. Ooh, more pages. Memories flood over me too fast. They race around inside my head, filling my soul with despair. Me, when I try to sleep. And the more I think about how nothing can be done, how no one can be alive outside his shield, the faster the fog rushes in. I can lose myself in the fog. When it's thick enough, I can let go and be safe. I can start to forget. But I must not forget. I must remember every lie they told my people. How they manipulated us all to get what they wanted. They told me they had come to fix my world. <clears throat> they asked me to arrange a meeting with the elders. The books they carried in with them showed other worlds, beautiful places where people didn't have to work so hard to survive. They told my people that Atris had written these books, that he had written Orion, but that he'd made our world unstable. They said he wanted to make us slaves to the tree. They asked me, don't you remember, Savadro? Our father wrote this world to teach us to show his sons what an age shouldn't be. I don't know what to say. I don't know how it could be true, but why would they lie? Why would Atris have lied? The worlds they showed us in those books. The elders refuse to believe them. They say we cannot abandon the tree. For thousands of years we have tended the lattice roots. Without our traditions we will die. I don't want to die. I don't. Cirrus and Akinar said they said they would come back, Salvadro, just like Atris once said to you as well. He said he would come back, but then he didn't. He didn't. And for that, you will have to make him pay. Okay. We got here. Broke this one. Let's see.
happens. We put this one here. How does it change? <laughs> Keep getting those Applebee's commercials. it oh that was funny okay ow <clears throat> all right says I'm reading there are 17 different words for a group of turkeys rafter gaggle and flock are the most common all right education <laughs> mm. the tragic backstory mm -hmm, interesting yes okay so that's why he's mad at atris i see fancy like applebee <laughs> A very lurky gaggle. Yep. Okay, that one goes there. Then I need, like, maybe that one? I don't know, man. We're gonna try them, though. Okay. there and we're gonna try this one we'll find out oh we got another turkey hey boomer welcome to the flock Maker in this world will have something to do. Boomer said as a turkey, I'm about to gobble a sub. Excellent, excellent.
think I'm going to be fiddling with this one for a while. Probably been bored for years and he sees a world hopper gets excited and fires up the furnace. Do this? I don't know if I can. We'll find out. <coughs> if I can't, I'll have to fill some more. <coughs> I appreciate the work. Welcome, welcome. I'm a big fan of it. Adana is my favorite, though. Adana has squee. Um, this is the first age that we've finished on this playthrough. I haven't played this since, like, high school, so... Everything is new again. Because we started playing it... Last week. And... You know, made it through Janan into Amateria. That's as far as we've gotten. All right. It's great to be back. This was always my favorite game of the series, so I'm really excited for replay. I do love a good glowing rock. He says, if there's ever a game to just relax in, relax in and enjoy the view, this is it. Oh yeah. Anything in the Mist series, anything from Cyan Worlds, like you can pretty much stop on any frame and just chill and it's perfect. Yeah. 
this one. stairs okay that's awesome too bad trumpet's gonna miss it oh, um. oh interesting Tisa's Voltaic is my second favorite age followed by Adana interesting Okay, are we ready? Will Applebee's hold off? Ooh. What's the matter, Atrus? Can't remember how things work? Yet you explained this class so well when we first spoke of it in Orion. I want Cirrus and Akinar to learn everything they can, Savidro. First from Amateria, Idana, Voltaic, and Finally from Narayan. When my boys come to see your people, I want them to see Narayan's traditions at work so they can see how civilization can balance an age. Do you know what they did when they finally came to us? You never came back. After class was over, you took your boys away, and you never came back. Cirrus and Akinar did. Did he just pronounce his own name, Savidro? There is only one E in that. Savidro. I don't know if I can rewire my brain at this point. I've been pronouncing it with a short E for 20 years. Let me just make sure I've got all of the volume all the way up. Like, he just pronounced that with a long E, didn't he? I didn't hear anything else he said. Just like ninja and fish. <laughs> the Deidre, the fish ninja. Like. What's the matter, Atrus? Can't remember how things work? Yet you explained this class so well when we first spoke of it in Orion. I want. Cirrus and Akinar to learn everything they can, Savidro. Savidro. First from Amateria, Idana, Voltaic, and finally from Narayan. When my boys come to see your people, I want them to see Narayan's traditions at work so they can see how civilization can balance an age. Do you know what they After class was over, you took your boys away, and you never came back. Cirrus and Akinar did. today. Ooh, okay. And 
I don't know either. My videos don't get that many views. Oh, I hi. starting point. I really need to know that. Okay. Alright, that's puzzle green. That's puzzle blue. That's puzzle yellow. And that's puzzle red. each one individually. to go what yellow blue green red. let's go yellow blue green red Oh, oh. 
but we got it. We got it. It's time for the best part. Oh, yeah. Bombs away. Marble runs like the best part. Like, the marble run is the best part of the game, but Adana is still my favorite age because it has Squee. They also have Peach eyes. Okay. Back to Shannon and. We'll pick our next age. Voltaic next. This one, well, okay. I want to say okay. We'll find out. Okay. And one goes like down here or 
something. Those tried to write it down and my notes are awful because I can't draw a circle. At least not in pen. Concentric circles in particular do not work. Something like that. Luke's opened a drawer and found so much stuff I forgot I owned. Weird how that happens. Okay. Hang on. See if I can figure out how to look at... No, not you. How to look at my screenshot. There we go. See, I'm sort of smart. Obviously very important stuff. Probably, yes. Okay. And then... This... Take my screenshot over there. I have a ramble for today, if anyone wants a ramble. says, I mean, there's a cool light-up keychain I have no memory of acquiring. It probably spawned in that drawer on its own. Junk drawers just start to create their own junk after it reaches a certain, like, critical mass, you know. to a series of videos on YouTube where this guy who's been a DM for like 30 years um, gives his like breaks down how to run D&D &D, like how he does it and everything and it's really interesting I don't agree with everything he says and not everything he says would be to my taste but you know it's interesting and like good to get a different perspective on things. One of the things he talks about though is sandbox games. Specifically, he likes to run his games as pure sandbox and he thinks that it's not fun if there is anything at all to indicate where you should go or what you should do. him. If you are just dumped into somewhere with no context and no direction and can do absolutely anything and there's nothing to indicate 
what you should or should not do, that's where the fun is. Like, I would have a panic attack. Like, I can guarantee this. Jumping into a bit. This so sounds like D and D. <laughs> like having your first child. Well, <sighs> he says that he'll. He doesn't give the, like, particularly at the start. He doesn't give anyone any quests. He just gives them hints, but he'll give like lots of conflicting hints and then see what direction they go in and build the game that way. And I find that really stressful. Like as a player, I would not enjoy that. I like having a quest. That's why I'm playing a game instead of trying to figure out what to do with my life. See, I don't want to be, like, railroaded, but completely open sandbox with just yeah, no direction at all stresses me out. That got me thinking about, like, different games that I've played, whether that's all the way through or, you know, 20 minutes. That's enough of that! I have started Morrowind! And I've never gotten farther than that because I never remember that there is not an autosave. So I always forget to save my game. And then in the very first combat encounter, I immediately die. So I have to start a completely new game. And I get to that first combat encounter and I immediately die in Dadgum, but I forgot to save again. So, like, it doesn't track quests, it doesn't track much of anything, you're just literally, you wake up on an island and there are monsters on it. And, like, you have very little more to it than that, and it's just, well, here you are now, and so you, like, it's a survival horror game, and so you have to figure out, like, how to survive and how to fight the monsters, and you have to, like, figure out what the mystery is and possibly how to get off the island, but I've never made it far enough to know if that's even an option or anything, because... Yeah, it is completely open. Like, there is nothing that you pick up that goes, new quest added to journal. No, you're just there. And I just find it very stressful. I find it overwhelming. And, like, I, I get really bad decision paralysis in that setting. I feel too much pressure. Boomer said there's a very old DOS game called net hack that has no save built in at all. <laughs> Tay said I was about to ask your age until I saw your username. <laughs> Boomer said I just turned 23 about 50 years ago. Now again, I really like um a lot about the forest. I would love to play the forest in co-op mode with my husband. Because husband does a lot better with 
sandbox, open world type stuff. He does not panic like I do. So I figure if we played the forest, I could just be in charge of our base. He could he could give me jobs to do and I could just grow blueberries and make weapons and armor and you know gather water for him. And it would be fine and he could be the one exploring places that might be too well, you don't really have levels, but places that are too high level for you. And... He can be the one trying to gather the clues and having to figure out what to write down and where to go and all of this. Because it is very, very possible in that game to find the clues in an order that will make the mystery make no sense. At least to me. Like, you can find things completely out of order. And it just really confuses me. I'm not smart enough for that. I have not played Ark. Uh, one of our regular viewers plays Ark a lot, though. I've thought about it. I need to look into it. Boomer said my first game was in the very early 1970s off an IBM 360 mainframe using a teletype terminal called a remote job entry terminal in IBM speak. Okay, said haven't heard of that. When in 1990, first game system I ever touched was the Atari. <laughs> Luke said I played Ark, but while while it was in early access, it was the game that taught me I hate early access. I can wait until the game is done, thanks. I actually played a little bit of the forest when it was early access. And like it's gotten a lot bigger then since then. So it's it's even more overwhelming now. Yeah, I tried to play the finished version, it was like, oh there's so much more here than I remember there being. Just absolute, complete s sandbox with no indication of direction at all. That's completely overwhelming to me. I at least need a, hey, there's smoke in that direction. I should see what's burning. Something. Anything. <laughs> Give me a starting point. Once I'm established and understand more of what's going on, I can choose a direction, but don't just drop me into the middle of everything. I like games like you know, Skyrim and Oblivion, where there's a ton of different quests and side quests and everything but like and and you can decide which ones to do and which ones not to do and all of that and like what order to do them in but you know when something is best I like being given jobs to do that I can check off the to-do list I do like it when the world around me reshapes because of my choices.
don't think that does anything yet. So, I like games that are open world but with a good quest tracking system. I like games that have linear storytelling but where your choices matter, like Strange Horticulture. That one was really cool. It has a very tight, very linear gameplay, but um, but it has decision points, and the choices you make at those points determine how the game ends. And I really like that it has this tight, linear story with multiple endings. Like, that's very cool to me. Okay. Hang on. I'm going to take a journal break. It is coming back to me, slowly. The knowledge of who I am, how long I have been trapped here. So much of it is still blurry. Whole blocks of time still floating in the fog that eats my mind. If I concentrate, I get pieces of it back. It was the dream that first helped me remember. I was lying in the reeds near the tusk. I don't know for how long or how I get here. How I got here? I think there's a typo. I'm staring at the sky, seeing a man grow out of the cliff. First his head, then his shoulders, then his torso. Sunlight rims his body like a halo. I cannot move. I think that death has finally come for me. The man stands on the cliff with a book in his hand, staring down at the lagoon as if something made him sad. I wanted to call out to him, to tell him it was me he's come to find. But my mouth is dry. I can't remember any words. And before I think to stand, he opens his book puts his hand on the page and fades to dust. I thought he was a dream. It was only later, hours or weeks later, that I find his swirling book atop the cliff. And when I reach down to grab it, it is real. The fog tried to swallow me then and there, but I held on to the firm reality of the book and did not let it. I did not let the numbness steal my mind. Also like tight story games, something like Mist or Barrow Hill, where it's the same every time. Ooh. What I don't like is the illusion of choice. I really don't like the illusion of choice. decision points and like you can make your character and make them who you want and have multiple endings. You can't. It's the same. None of your choices matter. Even when they give you dialogue choices, the NPC responses are the same regardless of which one you pick. If it had been just, like, openly 
this is about one character, and this is what that character does, and how they act, and you're just following their story, I would have been fine with that. But this thing where it is just one story, but it's trying to pretend like you have choices, oh, bothered me. is louder than the others. run modules, well, he won't run a module. He will run several modules at a time, and his players don't know which ones he's running. And, like, they're just in a world, and all of these modules happen to also be there. As they go, they might stumble into stuff, but nothing is indicated from the beginning of it. Yep. I get that that's fun for him as DM and player. I would not want to play with him. <laughs> nope, I'm scared. Yeah, I get enough decision fatigue in real life. I feel like I fully understand the thing. I tend to struggle with the more mechanical ages in general. Like, the mechanical age. cannot figure out what changing that did.
Perfect. Oh, hey, Chiller. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, Luke says you should play Titanic Adventure Out of Time for Mystery Monday someday. Lots of player choices. There's like six to eight endings. Ooh. Well, we'll definitely do Strange Horticulture at some point, too, because that was really fun. I want to be able to make choices and that affect the ending, but I really need some kind of direction for where the beginning is. Like if it is a complete blank slate, I'll just sit and cry. <laughs> the forest gives me way too much anxiety. I do want to play it because I really like um, a lot of it and I can tell that it's really good and I do want to know what what the mystery is what's going on and why but I can't figure out how to find out that's why we need to do multiplayer and buttons until one of them does something. Mm -mm. Driving home. Okay, don't type and drive. Be safe. don't seem to be doing much. Mm -hmm. Better turn this. It turned right back. Okay. That doesn't do anything either. Okay. But I can't get down that way. Can't figure out how to get in anywhere. I used to be able to solve Voltaic pretty easily. Like, I didn't understand it, but I could figure out which buttons to push. Hmm. Ugh. Lucation's taking break from mowing. Walk through a spider web. Nope. Don't like that. interesting sometimes I have that Sarah from Lab Labyrinth moment like I think I'm getting smarter and sometimes no nope
So the only thing I can do here is move that. See if that makes a difference anywhere else. Not there. It's locked. buttons over here. Still doesn't do anything. Where to that? Where to that? Okay, I have to be missing a button somewhere. Part of me feels like saying, I don't like complete sandbox games that give you no direction whatsoever. It makes me sound like a wuss. Like I just want my hand held the whole time. But I am a wuss. I play games because my brain is burnt out from real life. I don't have enough, enough left for all of that. I want to be able to learn things, I want to be able to make informed decisions based on what I've learned, and I want those decisions to affect the outcome. But if I'm supposed to make every... like, if I'm supposed to go through the whole thing with no direction at all, then I might as well use that energy to write a book. That's my feeling, anyway. You gotta give me something. There has got to be a button or something I'm missing. A lever? Hmm. These aren't working yet. I feel like that should be doing something, and it's not. The station says there are trails in parks. 
People like to know what direction to go, especially in uncharted territory. Yes. And if there are trails, honestly, I can then make the choice to go off trail. But that's still a choice. It's not just wandering. And I don't like feeling like I'm just wandering, waiting for something to bite me. on the trail notes. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There's what I was missing. Hot dog. Yeah. Yeah. One day, I will play the forest with Luke, and then he can figure out what's going on and give me my quests based on that. And then we can both be happy. I can do the boring grindy bits that... that he doesn't like, and he can do all of the scary directionless adventuring bits that make me too stressed and we can both learn the mystery of this island that we're trapped on. Quest to gather 200,000 shavings of wood. Pretty much. Nitrous. 20 years, Nitrous. 20 long Years alone, they tied me to a post. They burned their missed blinking books in front of me. They took everything I had. My wife! My two baby girls! And then, when I finally made it back to Narayan and I saw It would have been better if I had died. He's my favorite actor for a reason. <laughs> I see you play Stardew Valley. Where do Valley Harvest Moon and Animal Crossing seem so relaxing? I still haven't played Animal Crossing. I say, I tried Harvest Moon and I didn't get very far, but like, it wasn't because of the game. There was just stuff going on in real life, and so I couldn't get into the um, game. Oh, he chews the scenery like nobody's business. And it's fantastic every time. He does have a very wide range, though. Like, my favorite roles that I've seen him in are this, and he was in an episode of Babylon 5 called Passing Through Gethsemane, which is my favorite episode of Babylon 5. And that's going pretty far, because there are some fantastic episodes of Babylon 5. And in that, he played a monk. Really nice guy. And I love him in both of these roles. He was fantastic as Green Horn Kong. Like, so... So good. Yeah, Mist 3 and Babylon 5 are my two favorite roles that I've seen him in, and I feel like 
I feel like they do a very good job of capturing him doing what he's best at and really showcase his range as an actor. I don't know Evil Queen. Luciation, this is a job for the Count of Monte Cristo. Yep. Yeah, this is a revenge story. I mean, Mist 3 Exile, the perfect place to plan revenge. He's been amazing in everything I've seen him in. He was, like, you know, he's been in Psych, he's been in The X-Files. Um, oh shoot, I just thought of the other one. Criminal Minds. And he's fantastic in all of these. But I feel like there's a lot more overlap he played in those. Hmm. Oh, uh, Once Upon a Time. Ugh. I absolutely freaked out. They had Ro they had Brad Dorif and Robert Carlyle in the same scene in Once Upon a Time. I freaked out so hard. Okay, boom. at top and bottom. Okay. It's number two. Interested, and then I looked up the show and like um, content level. It's like, oh, okay then. Hmm. Okay, I think there's got to be a thing that matches up up here. Please don't have to look up 
this Eva Green and see if I've seen her or anything. There we go. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, and then there's gotta be like a big red button or something somewhere to start this thing, right? Changing one, change the others. I have never seen a James Bond movie. Any of them, ever. Yep. Okay, changing one, changes others. So. the voltage. Movie says there's there are many Bond movies, but you only have to watch the below seven of them. Plumptis. Okay. Voltage be a crackling. Don't know anyone y'all talking about. Whoop. Um, okay, well, the guy that's been on the little screens in the game talking about how much he wants revenge against Atris, the actor playing that character is Brad Dorif. So that's the main one we've been talking about. any dreadful and okay correct me if I'm wrong I think any dreadful was like around the same time as Ripper Street I think got you two cents worth and then you were off um and you know, did not wind up trying Penny Dreadful because I looked it up and was like, oh, that's dark. I did try Ripper Street and I couldn't take it. There was only one character that I found at all likable and most of the show was all the other characters being rude to him. So that was it for that one. I really liked that character, but man, the writers were really mean to him. They could not give him a break. There we go. stuff set up before I do that. Yeah, like all of my favorite actors are large hams. Like this, this is a thing. I love a good scenery chewer. I particularly love actors who almost exclusively play villains.
Like, my first favorite actor was Vincent Price. today yeah we've made some progress in Voltaic we we beat Amateria we got to ride the marble run so it's a great day but now I have to figure out what I'm doing in Voltaic see this one works now the other one doesn't I have played before, but not since, like, high school. Like, there was a while where I had all of the puzzle solutions basically memorized. Um, I guess I had to have played it in college. Because I remember making a bracelet that I wore to class once that had, um... Narayani symbols on it. I still have it somewhere. I had to have played it in college. But that means that I've had like 10 years to forget the answers to all of the puzzles. So... Edward said, Atrus has a weird fascination with incredibly dangerous elevators. Yes. Luke and I stayed in an Airbnb once. That was in, like, an above garage apartment. And there were two ways to get from the garage up to the apartment a like spiral iron staircase which was very aesthetic but I got so incredibly dizzy climbing that thing because you can just see through all of it you know the lighthouse style stairs yeah, it was very aesthetic I got seasick on it um the other option was an incredibly rickety little elevator I tried stepping into and the floor creaked and I was gone like a cat. Just Meow. like legitimately I it's like maybe I'll ride the elevator down because the stairs made me so dizzy. I put one foot in the elevator creak and I ran and hid in the bathroom like hiding from the creaking noise. I was aware that this was irrational. So I felt like they needed more puzzles because both the stairs and the elevator had missed vibes. Luke says the elevator was nice for suitcases but kind of scary for people. I started sending it up and down with our stuff and took the stairs. Which I appreciated because him riding the elevator scared me. Hmm. I did not trust it. It was a nice little Airbnb. It had a great view. But man. Okay. That's the only thing that doesn't have power. 
what is there? And why does it not work out? Slide down, Boomer. Thanks for visiting. Well, if the power's on, why doesn't everything have power? Hmm. Really thought I had it. Okay. So I've pronounced it Savadro for 20 years. I'm not exaggerating. And in one of the clips that we found of him talking, I swear he pronounced his own name Savidro. I don't know if I can change at this point. Also, I don't know why it would be a long E. Yes, he is a top tier character for me as well. I, I'd love him. Apparently I have no idea how to pronounce his name, but I love him anyway. Okay, I have to be missing something else. Last time I was missing something. Finding that thing. Got a lot of things working. So, let's be another thing I'm missing. Savidro just sounds wrong. It's been too long. That doesn't stay open, so it can't be that. There's nothing else here. But this seems to be as far as the power goes. Why is this as far as the power goes? says I've pronounced it the second way but either way is probably fine the English spelling doesn't do us any favors no it does not anytime you start getting like a double a in something it's gonna start getting puzzling okay, that looks like something I want but I can't reach that This doesn't work. And these don't do anything. Really, the A should be single and the E should be double. Yes! Like, if it's supposed to be pronounced Savidro, then it should be spelled like that. The way it is, to me, it looks like Savidro. Like, like, to me, that double A looks like there's supposed to be emphasis on it. I found a ladder that I've missed. Ah, ha, 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 ha. 
more pages. The cavern wall is almost ready. For weeks I've been polishing it, rubbing away at the cracks to obtain a smooth surface. I haven't been able to sleep much these last weeks. Relatable. As afraid, I might never wake up. But if I can make him see all that happened, if I can show him the pain his family caused, it will be worth it. Tomorrow I begin mixing the paints. Hang on. If... If... If that is the English spelling, then yes, that appears in his journals. It's like, focus after... Starts talking to himself like he's Gollum. Interesting. Secret tunnel. Okay, what can I do? Looks like a lever, but it's not. I can get over here, then there has to be something over here I need to do, right? One would think. Presumably the, ori the original spelling is a pictogram, yes. Sort of like, um... The English spellings of Chinese names. Which, like, there is a consistent system for them. It's just not what you expect it to be, given that it looks like English letters. So when I started watching C dramas, there was a whole lot of, it's pronounced like that. Like, trying to explain the subtle differences between, like, a CH, a Q, and an X. There's nothing here, why can I go there? There will be something here later. There has to be something I can do somewhere. I really thought this was going to be a breakthrough. And I cannot find anything to actually do. Looks like I should be able to. There's a little wire going up here. Oh. Okay. We won't get to beat the whole thing, though. We will have to 
wrap up uh, pretty quick because I got a text from my dad. He's on his way to help us recalk the tub. The joys of home ownership. But I am really, really glad that like, we know someone with experience doing this who can help us learn how to do it instead of just having to follow a YouTube video and hope for the best. Uh, I feel like there's got to be something for me to do up here. Like, otherwise, why is there a hidden door to it? Does it make any difference with this thing for the secret tunnel to be open? Right. He really does design elevators just for the drama. So I'll just have to figure it out next time, which I think should be next Monday. All right. I'm going to save my game before I forget. Yes. Okay. And then, we're actually going to do a raid. If I can remember how. Because Pip is live. So we can raid Pip. Raid. Ooh. All right, we're gonna raid Pip. She is an artist. She draws D&D &D art. Her husband uh, is a DM. And they are both playing in a friends game coming up here soon. She is currently drawing her husband's character, which is some kind of aspiring necromancer, I believe. It looks really cool. So, and she's, she's sweet, she's friendly, she doesn't cuss, so we're gonna raid her. I believe I should be back tomorrow, usual time, 3 o'clock Eastern. Until then, thank y'all so much for watching. I'm so glad that you were able to spend this time with me, and I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, everybody.